guys, Paul here. Hope you enjoyed that little intro. It's a little thrown together and kind of kind of funny, but uh, anyway, I just hope you guys enjoyed it. I had some other plans for it, uh, and the weather was just terrible. The drone wouldn't fly straight. Uh, yeah. Anyway, a lot of people asking about uh, how the how the car runs at the track, so I wanted to throw together a quick video. Um, I'm just gonna start this out with. I haven't raced at the track in, man, I bet it's been five years or longer. So not a professional, not even close. The weather was not great, but uh, we, did, we did get some runs in. Um, I wanted to see what the car would do completely dealership stock. Um, I picked up this car up in Ohio at Lebanon Ford Performance. Highly recommend those guys, very nice people. The, they can do the install on your car and you can uh, retain that Edelbrock warranty. So let's just go over what my car is. It's a 2019, it's just a base model. It is an automatic with the uh, 10 speed. Um, the obvious reason why you're all here is because of the Edelbrock supercharger. So it does have a 2650 stage one. Let's see, it is a uh, performance pack one. So it has uh, 355 gears in the rear end instead of 315s. Uh, I had Lebanon Ford Performance upgrade the oil pump gears in the engine, uh, and they also did G-Force half shafts in the back. I also had them do window tent while I was at it just because when I was going to be picking it up, it was going to be hot, so it helped on the drive home. Uh, plus, you know, hey, it looks cool. The stock tires that are on the Performance Pack 1 are on the back are 275-40-ZR19. I had a lot of people tell me that it was a waste of time uh, going to the track on street tires, but I really, really, really wanted to see what this car ran with the conservative warranty tune and just straight off the dealership lot. This is, I mean, I didn't change a single thing on it other than I let a little bit of air out of the back tires. I did lower the tire pressure in the rear down to 31 pounds. The track that we went to, uh, Mocan Dragway, kind of my home track, love it. Uh, it is a quarter mile and uh, it's a little bit of a drive, it's about an hour and a half to get there. Uh, but the car did amazing on the drive there and did amazing on the drive home. So spoiler alert, I did not break the car. Um, <laughs> anyway, the DA that night was uh, 25, 2500 so um, not exactly ideal. Because it was not test and tune night, they were, I had to enter the bracket series, and uh, so you're going to see some time slips that I actually had to do a dial-in, which is a little rough to do when you're trying to line out a car for the first time. So let's get to the track. I mean, let's go. Before the track was sprayed, I made a test hit here. Um, and as you can tell, traction was an issue. I did have advanced track turned off uh, by the button. The car ran a mid-12, somewhere in that area. A um, little depressing. <laughs> They sprayed the track before this run, but I was a little apprehensive to just give it all I had. So I foot stalled it up about 1500, nothing special. That didn't spin at all. Holy wow. Woo. See why that sucker run felt good. 
belt slipping, kind of chewing on the belt, so I could kind of feel it about fourth gear. I don't know what's going on with that. We're gonna have to get that figured out. But for street tires, that was pretty freaking fun. Turned my GoPro, I didn't even notice. Oh. Well, how'd it do for first run? 12-0, woohoo! 12.08 at 118.5. This next round was a fun little rematch against the car I just previously ran that beat me with an 1190 to my 1208. Let's see how this turns out. down a drag car Holy shit. oh my god I ran the same guy I ran last time and he kicked my ass. And this time I beat him I bet he wasn't expecting me to come around Woo! that was a run I got it up to about 2500 on the brakes before uh, the tree come down I cut a much better light um, yeah damn car is moving out Air inlet, inlet air temp is at 122 after the run. I should have checked it earlier. Um, and I just saved my run on my dash cam. Almost forgot that. Whoo! Now that was fun. That was fun. She spun though. Thanks, sir. Holy f 11.88 and 119 and a half. Woo! Woo! With a .01. Holy sh! How are we dialing in at? F me. Oh my God! Eleven eighty-eight on street tires. Whoa, dude, that's awesome. Uh, uh, uh. Holy sh! At this point, I really didn't know what to do. We decided to dial it in at an 11.90 after my 11.88 pass. Um, I still wanted to go as fast as I possibly could, but this is a bracket race and there's a chance to win back some of your money. Um, I was up against uh, a buddy of mine named Tyler and he is a very good bracket racer. Um, his truck is obviously a lot slower than mine, which makes it a little bit more difficult other than the fact that he can red light um, before I even get a green light to go. And uh, so, you know, you have a chance of winning that way too, but he is very good at the tree, as you will about to see.
trying to get everything I could out of the launch and stall it up a little bit higher, trying to get that magic 3000 mark. And the car just wasn't having it. You could obviously hear it start wheel hopping, um, which really messed me up on the tree. I was not ready for that to happen. And I was trying to let off the throttle just enough to get it to stop wheel hopping, but at the same time, not uh, drop the RPMs down too low and totally botch up my run. Um, ended up red lights big time. <laughs> I had a 0.15 red light uh, against Tyler's 0 0.09 um, green light. So um, yeah, instantly lost that race. But the good news is it helped solve my problem on whether or not I should lift at the end of the quarter mile. Um, once I red lit, I had already lost. So I might as well run it on out and run it on out. I did. Well, ran an 11.79, so that's awesome. Red lit, so I'm like, might as well run it on out. Well, all right, so 11.79 at 119.74 on an 11.90 dial. I picked up another freaking over a tenth. Wow. All right, we're gonna have to buy back in and change the dial. Check out that 1.8060 foot. Wow. I would like to take this time to thank Tyler from the previous race who knocked me out of brackets. I had to do the uh, walk of shame to go get re-entered and do a buyback. And when I got all the way down there, um, they had told me that Tyler had actually bought me back into the race. So that was very nice of him. Another dang red light. This time a minus 0 .0405. So close. <sighs> well, what that did was the same thing as last run. It allowed me to run it on out. So I ran it on out and I ran a new personal best. Well, we may have had a 0.04 red light, but we did at least run a personal best for the evening, 11.75 at 120.68. Not too bad for street tires. Um, there's a whole lot more potential in the car, of course.
red is my favorite color. <laughs> well, guys, that's how uh, that's how it went. Um, I hope you guys had fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like and subscribe. Um, the next step that I have is I will be taking the car to a dyno. I just I'm really curious on how close to the advertised numbers it's actually going to get. Uh, they claim basically 625 to the wheels somewhere in that area. Uh, so, you know, I'd just kind of like to see what happens there. Um, as far as the belt slipping, Edelbrock has already reached out to me about sending me a new belt, which is really awesome of them. Um, I, they did ask if it was maybe just pulling timing, uh, with advanced track still on, even though I pushed the button and turned it off. Um, I found out that, uh, you can actually unplug it under the hood, um, and completely shut it down. Uh, may or may not help me with, uh, street tires on. It may actually make it worse. Uh, maybe get too much power to the ground uh, and then just blow off the tires. I don't know. So uh, we'll see. We may actually, may actually try that. I don't know if I'll try it on dyno or if I'll try it at the track um, or just out on the street. So um, one other thing that I've been told that I might do is there is a little nitrous pill. I'll put a picture up here um, that is in the vacuum line and Edelbrock supposedly puts that in there to help with uh, daily driving. Um, it just kind of keeps boost from uh, hitting instantly. Um, but at the drag strip, that may be something that we want. Again, not so sure on street tires. And I don't know if that'll make the belt slip worse. Um, that's one thing that I'm a little worried about is if that, that comes in a little stronger, then that'll just you know cause the belt to slip even worse. Um, if I were to do everything all over again, uh, learning what I have about the car, I would personally really look into the Stage 2 kit that comes with an eight rib belt setup. I didn't look at that because for the amount of money and the fact that it was only 50 horsepower, I know it come with injectors, uh, throttle body, cold air intake, and a better tune. Um, I didn't look at that the right way. Um, I didn't realize that there may be a potential issue with the uh, six rib belt. So I really wish I had went back. So if you're looking at getting an Edelbrock kit, I would highly consider going on up to the stage two. Um, maybe someday I'll get to try an eight rib setup. And if so, I will make a video and show you guys the before and after. And, uh, and I'll let you guys know if it works or not. So uh, Edelbrock, if you're watching, Go ahead and send me that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but that'd be great. Uh, anyway, I, you know, so I, would I do this all over again if I had the chance? Absolutely. Um, Lebanon Ford Performance has been awesome. Uh, the car is fun. Um, so far, everything's been fairly dependable. Uh, man, yeah, the car's just fun. It makes me smile again. Uh, I have a blast. I'm not the best racer in the world. I'm not the best driver in the world, but you know, you put a, a smile on my face, <laughs> maybe get me to cussing a little bit and I'm having a pretty good, pretty good time. I got to hang out with my cousin. I got to hang out with friends. I got to make new friends. Uh, you know, th that's kind of the whole reason I started the car club back in the day. And this car is going to help spark that and get it going again. Um, that, that fire needs to be lit again, and uh, I, I'm hoping to see more and more people out. I hope to be able to feature more cars on this channel. Uh, I hope you guys will join me on my adventures. Um, and if you have any questions, if you have any comments, uh, if you guys have any advice, because I would love to get some advice, uh, please feel free to drop it in the comments, uh, message me, uh, what, whatever, you know. Um, I, I'm new to all this, so uh, old school racer, but kind of trying to get back into the game, and man, I really don't know much about the new cars. Um, I certainly don't know anything about the SCT tuner that's in it, but I do know that I have to get a PC. I'm a Mac user, and I have to get a PC to be able to upload all the um, information so I can data log it and get it configured correctly. One other thing that I would mention is uh, if you're getting a base model Mustang, my car does not have track mode. So the I've been told the Edelbrock tune does not touch the transmission settings. And I don't know if you've watched any other YouTube videos online, but you can hear them barking tires, you know, all the way through fourth and fifth gear. Um, my car does not do that because it only has sport mode. So 
until I can get an aftermarket tune on the car, which voids my warranty, so it's going to be a while before I would do that. Um, it's just not going to get the aggressive runs in it um, and the aggressive shifting. Um, I think that's what's holding the car back a little bit. Do I think that the car has the potential if you were to throw everything out the window warranty-wise and just go at it with slicks, um, put some skinnies on the front, um, yeah, you're going to be running low 11s. Um, there's no doubt in my mind. If you throw a tune on the car and you can get the belt to quit slipping and you can actually get it to, to do a full rip when the, the weather's right, um, the DA's good, uh, and the track is set up well, I really do think that there's every bit of potential for a low 11 second car. Um, but I'm not going to be that aggressive with the car. I want to enjoy the car and... Uh, at the same time, I need it to kind of stick around, and, and I don't want to have any problems with it. So I'm going to be pretty conservative uh, for a while. Uh, as the speed bug hits, <laughs> I may I may change my mind completely. I don't know. We'll see what your guys' comments are and your feedback. And, uh, you know, if, if this really takes off, then uh, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? So I'm trying not to look down the, down the road. Uh, I hope you enjoy the videos. I'm... I, I'm a very slow editor, so I'm not going to be throwing out content like crazy, but I like to throw out quality, so uh, I'm more quality over quantity at this point. Um, again, that may change too, but uh, anyway, like I said, I hope you'll stick around. Uh, there's more to come, so let me know what if you have a video that you would like to see. I'll, uh, I'll do my best to, to make it. Um, yeah, and if there's anybody in the Southwest Missouri area that has another Edelbrock car, I would love to meet you and talk to you and compare cars. Uh, maybe even go to the track. Um, I'm hoping to hit, uh, I'd like to do at least one autocross in the car soon. Um, so that was another thing that I really like to do. Uh, anyway, we will see you in the next one.